Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about the box journey and music. Okay, so we I, I've talked about the box journey, uh, so I don't want to be repetitive and tell you all the boxes, because we're going to go through them as we we'll go through them now. But all of the Dungeons & Dragons basic set boxes, uh, you know, of course, were built in a specific era. They were built within a specific time within American history, okay? And uh, I believe that Dungeons & Dragons... Uh, is a special Americana element that both radiates impact into American history and then absorbs impacts from American history, okay? And part of that is music. So the music that was prevalent at the time of the creation of the basic set boxes impacted the design of those basic set boxes. Now, the level and the degree changed, right? So I don't believe for a second that all of the Dungeons & Dragons designers who were responsible for each basic set box all had the same love and attention for American music. But they all heard it, right? So, you know, they, some of them may have just listened to it on their radio. Some of them ha may have had, you know, LP collections. Some of them may have had a girlfriend or a wife uh, who, you know, who listened to a specific type of, type of music or was a singer, uh, even, you know, in, you know, wherever they went each week, right? So all those things are, are there. They're children. Their children have music. And so, so all these designers were essentially being impacted by the music of their time. And in many ways, also, their designs were impacting the music that was being made. That is very clear. Uh, like, go ahead. It's about a million articles on the, on the internet about how Dungeons and Dragons has made its way into American music. All right, so I, what I want to do today is I want to talk about each box uh, box, and then talk about the music that was there. So let's get into it. All right, the first, the first one is uh, the musical genres that were existent at the time of each box, okay? So I am going to be now injecting a Garibay neologism into this conversation, which is brop, okay? Uh, brop is the amalgamation of three musical genres. It is R&B, uh, rhythm and blues, and of course R and B. Both of those letters are in the word brop. Okay. Uh, the next one is rock. Okay, and R O is in brop. And last is pop. Okay, and of course op is at the end of brop. So brop is R and B, rock and pop. Okay. And the reason why we have to talk about brop is every single Dungeons and Dragons basic set box, everything in the box journey is impacted by brop. Okay. So those musical genres have been there, in my opinion, since Chuck Berry, which predates Dungeons and & Dragons. And so Brop has been in existence for every single basic set box that there has ever been. And so Brop impacts um, Dungeons & Dragons design, okay? <laughs> the only question is how much of a degree it impacted each box, okay? All right, so um, with that, Every, you know, we'll, we'll go forward at this point. So now I'm going to talk about each box, and I'm also going to talk about the genres that spiked. So each box is brop plus these spike genres. So let's talk about the spike genres. Okay, so let's let's get into it. Let's talk about the first two boxes. 1974, Gygax Brown. Okay, 1976, Gygax White. What was happening at the time of these boxes? What were the spike genres? Well, that was disco and folk. Actually, it was in this order. It was folk and then disco, okay? And really, they own, they own, you know, those two boxes marinated in disco and folk, okay? All right. Next, you had the 81 Moldve and the 83 Menser, okay? 81 Moldve Red, and you had the 83 Menser Red, okay? Now, what was happening at that time? What were the spikes, okay? And the spikes then were hip hop and metal, okay? So those those are the spike genres for uh, Moldve and Menser, okay? All right, so what happened when we hit the 91 Denning Black, okay? Now the 91 Denning Black was, that was existing in the time of the, you know, the spike genres then were grunge, okay? And also rap, okay? And at that point, you know, rap was becoming very prominent, all right? So then you go to the aughts. Now, what was happening during the aughts, right? During the aughts, you were seeing emo and trap, okay? that was, Those were the spike genres within that era, okay? And then last, you have the tens. Oh, and I'm sorry, let me, let me back up. Uh, so for emo and trap, 
you that was impacting specifically only one box, which was the uh, the 06 Tweet Black. Okay, now um, and then right now, our decade right now covers the 2010 Hansu Red and the 2014 Merle's Green. Okay, now what is the spike genres? And this is my opinion, but I don't think there's any spike genres in this in this decade. We are dealing with um, we are dealing with a very clear uh, prominence of the internet. So this is one of the decades where the internet has just absolutely pounded into music, and so music has just virtually fractured. You know, like it's it's really really just decimated um, music in, in good and bad ways. So the old music industry is just uh, like it is limping bad and music has been completely reshaped. I was just listening to uh, Layla Coba recently. She covers Latin music for Billboard. Uh, really, really brilliant lady. Great writer. I highly recommend her work. Uh, she's got some really good books out there. And, uh, and you know, she, she's been talking recently about how much it's impacted music and how digital music is very different than music was previously. So I believe that the spike genre right now is diaspora. There is so much music being made, so much great music being made because it's so cheap to make music and so easy to make music that right now we're in the, uh, that, you know, the 2010 Hain Su Red and the Mike Merle's green and the 2014 Merle's green, those are really marinating in diaspora. There is everything. There's just like reggae and alt rock, and you got millennials listening to you know uh, Stairway to Heaven and the Beatles and like you know the Decemberists and like it's just it's just insane. Like every single genre is going crazy. There's more there's more music being made than ever. Uh, it's, it's, it's so, you know, voluminous, like the, the desire for people to make musical art is so high and the tools are so cheap and the ability to send that music into the ether is so readily available. Uh, and again, you know, with very limited cost that there's just been an absolute explosion of music and there really is no spike genres because everything is spiking. You know, when, when everything is going crazy, nothing is going crazy. You know, like it, it, like it really is, it just flattens everything. And so right now, I think it's a terrible time for music and a wonderful time for music. Like, right, you know, it's really a transition period. And so, um, you know, and, and that speaks even more that I think, uh, you know, the 2010, uh, the 2010 Hainsu, Hainsu Red and the 24 Merle's Green they were really challenging to build. You know, you're building boxes in a time where boxes are, are less relevant than they used to be, right? You know, especially with the rise of online gaming. So uh, the online tabletop role-playing games, uh, the rise of Mike Mercer, uh, uh, Matt Mercer, and, and all those things. So that is the box journey, and that is specifically musical genres and where each of the boxes sat within the musical genres. Brap. Thanks, everybody.